Hi guys, welcome to another video. In this video, I want to talk about Android runtime. Most of you probably heard the terms ART, DALVI, GJIT, and IoT. If you ever wondered what those terms exactly mean, how Android runtime works, and how it evolved over the years to make our apps faster and faster, you will learn all that from this video. So without further ado, let's get started. But first, what exactly is Android Runtime? When we build our app and generate APK, part of that APK are DEX files. Those files contain the source code of our app, including all libraries that we used. And those files are written using low-level code designed for a software interpreter, the bytecode. When user runs our app, the bytecode written in DEX files is translated by Android Runtime into the machine code, a set of instructions that can be directly understood by the machine and is processed by the CPU. Android Runtime also manages memory and garbage collection, but to not make this video too long, I will focus only on compilation part. But if you want me to cover also that topic, let me know in the comments. The compilation of the bytecode into machine code can be done using various strategies, and all those strategies have their trade-offs. And to understand how Android runtime works today, and why it's done like this, we have to first move back in time a couple years and learn about Dalvik. In the early days of Android, phones were not as powerful as they are now. Most phones at the time have very little RAM, some of them even as little as 200 megabytes. No wonder the first Android runtime known as Dalvik was implemented to optimize exactly this one parameter, RAM usage. So instead of compiling the whole app to machine code before running it, it used the strategy called just-in-time compilation, JIT in short. In this strategy, the compiler works a little bit as an interpreter. It compiles small chunks of code during the execution of the app, so at runtime. And because Dalvik only compiled the code that it needed, it allowed saving a lot of RAM. But this strategy had one serious drawback. Because compilation happened at runtime, it obviously had negative impact on runtime performance. Eventually, some optimizations were introduced to Dalvik. Some of the frequently run code was cached to not be recompiled without need, but it was all very limited because of how scarce RAM was in those early days. And that worked fine for a couple of years. But in time, phones were getting more and more performant and were getting more RAM. And the fact that apps were also getting bigger caused that the performance impact that Dalvik had at runtime was getting more and more of a problem. And that's why in Android L, the new Android runtime was introduced, and it was called ART. The way ART worked in Android L was a 180 degree shift from what we knew from Dalvik. ART, instead of using just-in-time compilation like it was done in Dalvik, used a strategy called ahead-of-time compilation, AOT in short. So in ART, instead of interpreting code at runtime, code was compiled before running the app. So when the app was running, machine code was already prepared. This approach hugely improved runtime performance since running the machine code is about 20 times faster than just-in-time compilation. But this approach also has some drawbacks. Art in Android L used a lot more RAM than Dalvik. Another drawback of the AOT is that it took more time to install the app since after downloading the APK, the whole app needed to be transformed to the machine code. And it also took longer to perform system update because all apps needed to be re-optimized. For frequently used methods and classes, it obviously pays off to have it all pre-compiled. But the reality is that most parts of our apps are very rarely used by our users. 
So having all APK pre-compiled almost never pays off. That's why an Android N just-in-time compilation was introduced back to Android runtime, along with something called profile-guided compilation. Profile-guided compilation is a strategy that allows constantly improving performance of Android apps as they run. By default, the app is compiled using the just-in-time compilation. But when ARMT detects that some methods are hot, which means that they are run frequently, ARMT can pre-compile and cache those methods to achieve the best performance. Other parts of the app stay uncompiled until they are actually used. This strategy allows providing the best possible performance for key parts of the app while reducing the RAM usage, since, as it turns out, for most apps, only 10 to 20% of code is frequently used. After this change, ART no more impacted the speed of app installs and system updates. Recompilation of key parts of an app happened only while the device was idle and charging, to minimize the impact on the device battery. The weak point of this approach is that in order to get the profile data and to pre-compile frequently used methods and classes, user has to actually use an app. That means that the first few usages of the app can be kind of slow, because just-in-time compilation is used then. That's why to improve this initial user experience, Android team introduced in Android PAM something new in art. And that thing was called Profiles in the Cloud. The main idea behind Profiles in the Cloud is that most users use the app in a very similar way. So, in order to improve performance right after installation, we can collect profile data from people who already use this app. This aggregated profile data is used to create a file called a common core profile for the application. So, when a new user installs the app, this file is downloaded alongside the application. Art uses it to precompile classes and methods that are frequently run by most of the users. That way, a new user gets a better performance right after downloading an app. And it does not mean the old strategy is no longer used. After the user runs an app, Art will gather user specific profile data and recompile code that is frequently used by this particular user when the device is idle. And the best part of all this is that it all happens behind the scenes in Android runtime. We developers who are making apps don't have to do anything to enable it. Okay, so to very quickly sum up. Android runtime is responsible for compiling bytecode, which is a part of an APK into device-specific machine code, which can be understood directly by the CPU. The first Android runtime implementation was called Dalvik, which used just-in-time compilation to optimize usage of RAM, which was very scarce at the time. In order to improve performance in Android L, ART was introduced, which used ahead-of-time compilation. That allowed achieving better runtime performance, but caused longer installations and more RAM usage. And that's why in Android N, JIT was introduced back into ART, and Profile Guided Compilation allowed to achieve better performance for the parts of the code that were frequently run. To allow users to get the best performance possible right after an app is installed, in Android P, Google introduced Profiles in the Cloud, which complements previous optimizations by adding the common core profile file which is downloaded with APK and allows R to pre-compile parts of the code, which are most frequently run by previous app users. All those optimizations allow Android Runtime to make our apps as performant as possible. And that will be all in this video. Thank you all for watching. If you want to watch more videos like this, hit the subscribe button, and hopefully we we'll see each other in the next video. Bye!